We were crossing the daunting body of water called the Tuantepec to bring our dear vessel Rosa to the closest, most appropriate boatyard for a total interior remodeling. Bathing in our little cockpit with dolphins swimming all around is one reason why it felt so agonizing to bring her to the yard now, but the work was long overdue. We were heading to a new boat and a new adventure in the future. While we had done a lot of work on Rosa and San Francisco to make sure that the hull and rigging were safe to sail, the interior was rotting away from having been abandoned with leaky windows for decades in a marina before we saved her. How much fish did we get today? Uh, we got a, um, a record-breaking 37 fish today. 30, 37, 40 fish. 37 bonitos, two chulas, one dorada, which we threw back. So tiny. And something really, really, really big. That took your lure. Took my lure. Oh, you can barely make out the inch on. Oh, there he is, yeah. What were the guy left in the cocker? Boom, dos minutos, boom. For about two years now, we haven't had a chunk of money required to do this remodel of the interior. But our friend, who would be taking over Rosa, did have some funds, as long as we stuck to a tight budget. You're dying. <laughs> did you see the sailfish jumping behind the boat? In the disjointed little galley that I've been very shy to show on camera, Robbie fried up our last catch on our last passage aboard Rosa. The next meals cooked here would be in a freshly remodeled galley. Uh, are you gonna be on 16 or 16? I'll stay in 16, uh, so I can call the, uh, so I can call the marina. <laughs> we caught sight of the port entrance by another cruise ship towering over the small town. We followed Noelia and Tincho aboard their Tradewind 35, My 10, into the mangrove sheltered Marina Chiapas. Our entire armada had made it safely across the Tuatapec. Our brand new neighbors were so kind that they even did our laundry for us aboard their enormous catamaran. As usual, I gawked at the new flora and fauna. Ronnie said there was one of the guys who came and helped us back in. Said there was. The landscape was noticeably greener here. A short celebration and a short check in. <laughs> Bye, honey. I'll send you a postcard from Costa Rica. And we were immediately back in business. We were booked for a haul out as soon as possible. Last time Rosa left the water was two years ago in San Francisco. We opted not to have the bottom pressure washed. That's how relatively clean she was looking. Quite a contrast to last time. We nestled into our new home for a while. This would be our daily view for almost the next three months. The crew of adventure going on to their next adventure. <laughs> Ravi and Justine enjoying the spoils. The area would be entering a hurricane season soon, so off came the sails. Where do you want to put it? 
Our friend Tincho helped us get started on the formidable task ahead. Hot, hot, hot. Yeah, you have to be a fan. See how bent it is when the water makes? Yeah, it's all warped. Much of the warped and rotting saloon came out quickly with only a hammer. Most of the semi fiberglass stuff, such as the floor, required a multi tool, which is a very versatile power tool that is excellent to cut into those awkward places. The squeaky, awkward engine compartment, held together primarily with rusty nails and some screws, took a little more coaxing with the hammer and chisels to break apart. We decided that everything aft of the head would come out except for the main bulkheads, which being vertical did not seem to suffer as much water damage. We went after anything that seemed flimsy. Demolition man. It's very easy to take things apart. It's not... As all the wood went out into the recycling pile, I began prepping the remaining wood and fiberglass. We've taken everything out. She's almost completely empty. All the junk is under the, the boat here. A good breeding ground for um, black widow spiders. I'm, I'm imagining that every little bug I feel on me is a black widow because we've seen, well, Robbie found a couple of them in the yard here. We removed all of the wood in the saloon, all of the cabin sole, the kitchen, the engine compartment area. Um, I've just ground down all the spots where things were attached and glued and all the crap that's on the wall. Make it nice and ready for some new fiberglass and epoxy and wood and, and uh, mat and so it's a sauna in there. I uh, said, I look like a. I look like I've been working hard. No, you look, you look like, you look like a Teletubby, or like Robbie Williams would say it. You look like a sperm. It's like dripping. I'm dripping on what I'm yeah. grinding. I hate when you're actually working and you're dripping on what you work. That's what's happening. It's like wet. Where I'm, where I'm grinding, I'm wet grinding. Never use a spinning power tool such as a grinder around hanging ropes or wires like I did here. That's a great way to get the tool tangled and flying around the room dangerously and wildly. And after all that hard work, this is how she looked. Just kidding. Our neighbors needed a little help with one of their engines. I like this chair. It looks like yeah, you're so the director's it's chair. It's cut! <laughs> one newly installed engine belt later, and we wished them luck as they headed north. Another set of cruisers leaving the marina for the summer. And then when you start your, your size to win, you put power on that engine first, and you can put a little reverse on that one, and you can go and just turn to the wind. Okay. Ah, thank you, uh, thank you. This marina would not allow us to stay on board the boat on the hard, even if it wasn't completely gutted. We needed to find a place to stay. We hoped to rent a house near the beach in Playa Linda, but we decided on a hotel room in Puerto Madero, further from the marina, but closer to shops and food. It's a light on your dash. It's a uh, service engine soon. <laughs> uh -oh. Our friends rented a vehicle and helped us find a place to stay as well as take an important trip inland to visit the chocolate factory. The seeds are separated from their pods, the pulp is fermented and then dried, the beans roasted, and here the cocoa powder is worked by hand and stone. The nice ladies at the shop made us some fresh cocoa cakes to try. Mm. 
and Tincho tried his hand at processing the powder. <laughs> of course, they also had coffee and dried stevia, popular edible cultivations of this region too. Finally, we said goodbye to some more friends, the crew of my ten. Thank you for all your generosity and see you out on the water somewhere, sometime soon. We became accustomed to working into the evening, demolishing and prepping, sometimes until after dark, when the surrounding mangroves would come alive with the strong sounds of birds and bugs. Part of the remodeling would include fixing the mast step and compression post. The crane truck arrived not only to remove the mast, but to take out the Volvo MD7A engine as well. The engine came out without a hitch. However, the state of the engine was another story for another time. Okay. All we could concentrate on for now was rebuilding the engine compartment. Actually, Quickly, the next step was to unstep the mast. We had half an hour. Clock was ticking. Robbie went up and attached the lines to the crane, just below the upper spreaders. The mast was properly balanced at that point. And she came down without swinging or hitting the hull. No mast and no engine. The boat looked really naked now. We precariously dragged a boat stand up the ladder and used it to hold the deck up while fixing the compression post and step. The aluminum was badly corroded at the bottom and the deck sagging at the top. The wet, rotten wood at the bottom allowed the post to sink down dramatically. <laughs> this thing... Might not be so easy to put back. But we had a secret weapon for this matter. Join us next video to find out how we build back up from the demolition of the interior of Rosa. On a scale of rottenness,